For the injunction to be kind, as well as the prohibition against being cruel, cannot serve as adequate principles by reference to which we can determine how animals ought to be treated. This is what Tom Reagan, the late American philosopher specialized in animal rights theory, argues. He is responding to organizations and advocates who campaign for animal welfare issues on the basis of anti-cruelty, human kindness, or both. Reagan's view is that anti-cruelty is an unsatisfactory, insufficient basis for determining humans' negative duties to animals, and that pro-kindness is likewise an unsatisfactory, insufficient basis for determining humans' positive duties. Why aren't anti-cruelty and pro-kindness enough to champion animal welfare causes? Reagan starts by defining cruelty and kindness. What does it mean to be cruel? Cruelty is defined first by what a person does or fails to do, and second by what a person feels or fails to feel. To the first point, inflicting suffering on another by acts of commission is active cruelty. To do so by acts of omission is passive cruelty. To the second point, inflicting suffering on another because one derives pleasure from the suffering is sadistic cruelty. To do so because one is indifferent to the suffering is brutal cruelty. The active and passive might then be combined with the sadistic and brutal, creating four possible classifications of cruelty. For instance, a person who consistently neglects to feed their dog because they are different to the suffering the dog endures for hunger is exhibiting passive, brutal cruelty. Now, what does it mean to be kind? Reagan defines kindness as inclination to act with the interest of furring the interests of others, out of love affection, or compassion for the individual whose interests are being forwarded. Kindness differs slightly from niceness in that nice acts need not emerge from a place of benevolence. To be kind to animals is to act toward them out of unselfish love, affection, or compassion with the aim of advancing their interests. With Reagan's philosophy of cruelty and kindness understood, we return to the original question. Why are they unsatisfactory, insufficient bases for determining humans' negative and positive duties to animals? The problem for Reagan is that judgments of cruelty and kindness depend on knowledge of an actor's motives and intention. A person who acts or fails to act so that suffering to another results is not cruel in the sense that Reagan defines if they are neither pleased by nor indifferent to the suffering. However, one's mental state about an act is logically distinct from moral assessment of the act. That is, how one feels about suffering one has caused is irrelevant when considering the wrongness of causing that suffering. In a similar vein, to be kind is to occupy a particular mental state of unselfish love, compassion, etc. that inspires action toward another's interests. To judge someone as kind is to praise their goodness as a person, is distinct from praising a kind act as morally right. Kindness is more common on mental state than on moral assessment. Moreover, kindness is superfluous. No one is owed kindness from another. Animal welfare, though, is concerned with what humans owe to animals. This is not captured by the injunction to be kind animals. Instead of anti-cruelty or pro-kindness, Reagan proposes prevention of unnecessary suffering as a satisfactory, sufficient basis for determining humans' duties to animals. Prevention of unnecessary suffering is distinct from the concepts of cruelty and kindness and does not reference motive, intentions, or mental state. Moreover, unnecessary suffering in Reagan's philosophy has two senses, the factual and the moral. The factual sense of unnecessary suffering recognizes that suffering may be necessary if a given goal cannot be achieved without the incidence of that suffering. The moral sense of unnecessary suffering recognizes that causing or allowing suffering in a given circumstance, whether defended in a factual sense or not, needs moral justification. Together, the factual and moral senses of unnecessary suffering say that all suffering for morally unjustified goals, as well as suffering above what is required to fulfill a morally justified goal, should be prevented. Reagan believes that from this, the moral obligations of humans to animals may be confidently derived. He adds that, rightly understood, the anti-cruelty and pro-kindness perspectives may fit in the framework of preventing unnecessary suffering.